Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Peter Skaggs with Lighthouse, and I want to thank you for joining me on episode number six of the Lifestyle Asset Podcast. Today, we are going to answer the question of what are the pros and cons to a short-term rental and compare those to the pros and cons of a long-term rental. So let's jump right in. First, let's define what a short-term rental is. Uh, I refer to them as lifestyle assets, and, and the reasons for that are found in other podcasts. Other people call them vacation rentals or Airbnb, uh, maybe a Verbo or vacation rental by owner. Uh, no matter what you call them, they are furnished residents that are rented out for anywhere from one or two nights all the way up to maybe 30 nights. Uh, the duration can just depend on what the market is, uh, what the house offers, etc. cetera. Uh, compared to a long-term rental, there's no real set definition of a long-term rental, and it can vary from state to state and from market to market, but typically anything over 30 days is considered a long-term rental. That said, there is a growing niche that we're not going to really get into here, but a growing niche in what's called a medium-term rental, and these are filling that 30 days to six uh, months, uh, that that 30 day to six month window right now. So a long-term rental then would be anything six months over that's being rented out for a period of six months or, or more than that. So now let's look at the pros and cons to both short-term rentals and long-term rentals. Short-term rentals, lifestyle assets, uh, vacation homes, verbos, they're great gaining a lot of momentum right now, mostly because they offer all of the amenities or most of the amenities that hotels offer and uh, they're beautifully uh, done, uh, but they might do it at a better price or they might be more sp or they're typically more spacious. Uh, as an example, I just went on a business trip with a colleague. We rented a two bedroom uh, vacation rental uh, a lifestyle asset. We rented it for a less than we were going to pay for the hotel with the convention that we were there. We we're supposed to get a discount with the convention things. We still on a nightly basis we're able to rent a two bedroom for uh, for less expensive. So we had more space and it was more affordable for us in our circumstance. So that's why they're gaining momentum here. Now, pros and cons. I wanna look at this from an investor's perspective, not why people are using vacation rentals or long-term rentals, but why are we investing in them as an asset class and which one's right for us? So uh, typically on a short-term rental, a lifestyle asset, we're going to get more in rent and we're going, so as a result, we're going to usually get a higher ROI. Short-term rentals are more lucrative because the rent is usually twice the rent of a long-term, uh, the rents that you're gonna receive on a long-term rental. Uh, in addition, landlords can easily triple or at least double their regular prices if there's a sporting events or conventions or festivals or you know music events, or something else that's in town. That's a, you know, it's a great way to generate extra cash flow. And because you're only renting for a short period of time, you have that flexibility. So if you have short-term rentals in major cities like, uh, you know, Los Angeles or New York, DC, San Francisco, Seattle, uh, even here in like Salt Lake, you can ask for twice of what you can usually get in the long-term rental market. Uh, long-term rentals are usually not furnished. Short-term rentals are furnished. That's why you also usually get a little bit more. Uh, the, other, the other pro to a short-term rental is flexibility. Uh, you can use it, and that's why we call it a lifestyle asset, is you have the ability as the owner to set aside days, weeks, months, uh, where you can use that property or you can make it available to friends or family, uh, and then you rent it out when you're not using it. Uh, you, so that is really, really nice. The other fl flexibility that a, a short-term rental gives you that a long-term rental doesn't give you is, is the ability to adjust based on seasonality. Or like I mentioned earlier, if there's a, an event coming into town, you can adjust those prices or on weekends, you can collect more or during, you know, like I said, peak seasons right now, it's snowing like crazy here in Utah. And so we might increase the, uh, the nightly rates for this season because it's going to be an awesome ski season. I have that flexibility where I don't have that flexibility with long-term rental. Uh, it is also nowadays easy and low cost typically to market your long-term rental or excuse me, your short-term rentals. 
Uh, you can easily post them on the OTAs, uh, online travel agencies like Airbnb, VRBO, Hotels.com, and many other OTAs that are out there. You have that flexibility. Uh, you can usually post them for free. It's easy to do. Uh, the way you distinguish yourself is just by doing a great job in deep with a detailed description, great photos. We teach you how to do that in some of our marketing classes. Uh, if you if you want to connect with us, we can show you how to distinguish your property uh, more appropriately. Now, some of the cons to a short term rentals: uh, upkeep and maintenance. You know, because it is your asset that you own. You need to, as an investor, you need to be aware of upkeep and maintenance. We had AC issues not too long ago. We're the ones that have to arrange because we don't have a property manager. You or your property managers are the ones that have to arrange getting somebody in there to fix those, uh, uh, fix those maintenance issues. We also have to make sure the property is kept up, uh, and that we're replacing towels, replacing linens, replacing uh, silverware and plates and, and those kinds of things uh, because of typical wear and tear, things go missing, etc. Uh, there is no fixed rental income that you can count on. That's another con to a short-term rental. What I mean by that is a long-term rental, you have a month, uh, a lease agreement that outlines what you're getting paid for the next six months or next year. When you do a short-term rental, you don't have that. You might be booked out one or two or three months, but you don't have any sort of guarantees that those rents are coming and you don't have a long-term fixed rental agreement in place. I think most of you understand that. There are also concerns about regulations. I know that's uh, one of the things that a lot of uh, my clients have voiced is the concerns about kind of those microeconomics uh, what are the what is the uh, city going to do? What is the county going to do with short term rentals? What is an HOA going to do? How are they going to uh, address short term rentals? Will those rules change over time? Will it impact my ability uh, to rent this as a short term rental? So those regulations oftentimes are a concern, uh, can be a con for short term rentals. So long term rentals, pros and cons. Uh, you know, so I have a lot of long-term rentals as well. I, I love my lifestyle asset. It generates me, it is the best investment I have ever made, period. And I go through why that is in other podcasts. So I won't reiterate that here, but it is the best investment I've ever made. That said, I also invest in long-term rentals. I have a lot of them. Uh, the reason I like them is they're usually fairly easy to manage. You get the right tenant in there, it's a set and forget. It can become mostly passive. I don't know that it's ever really truly passive, but it can be mostly passive and that's really, really nice. You don't have to worry about furnishing costs. You don't have to worry about replacing furniture, replacing silverware, replacing linens, those kinds of things. Those costs are all on the, the uh, tenant. The tenant is the one responsible for furnishing the place and ultimately providing all of those things to themselves. Uh, you also get a security deposit uh, and, and, and also usually like first month, last month's rents. So it's nice you get this nice influx of cash, right? When you rent your property out for the first time. So you have money to sit on in reserve to protect you and to help you uh, with that. So that is a really, really nice thing. So on top of the guaranteed rents that are going forward, they're easy to manage. You don't have the furniture costs. And, uh, and you get those security deposits uh, to help protect you against some things. So the cons to a, a long-term rental, uh, you are at a fixed rent. And so if you get into a market where uh, it's becoming more and more difficult to afford to buy, now you have an influx of renters, but you've locked in your tenant oftentimes for one or two or three year agreements. And as a result, uh, you can't adjust with the market. You, you don't have the potential, that flexibility uh, to increase your rents uh, as, as the market dictates. So that is a negative, a con to long-term rentals. You also have a lot less control over long-term rentals. Once you've kind of put a tenant in there, and it really depends on the state and the regulators as well, but uh, once you put them in there, you can have difficulties. If you have problematic tenants, 
uh, evictions can become time consuming and, and oftentimes expensive. You're going to have legal fees and having to go through a process. Uh, you know, so you've lost control of that property to a degree. I, I still, again, like long-term rentals, you just want to make sure you're buying in the right markets that are landlord friendly, etc. Also, there is a higher risk of damage and prolonged issues uh, causing damage. As an example, one of my long-term rentals, uh, there was a leak, the tenant didn't say anything, and over time, mold builds up, you know, uh, the subfloor, you know, was uh, saturated, and as a result, it, you know, we had to rip up the subfloor and the flooring. We had to, uh, we have to replace those, that fix the leak, uh, and then we had to do some mold mitigation. You know, that's a, that's a big expensive damage uh, re, uh, repair when it could have been a lot, lot easier had I had somebody in that home. Uh, one, my tenant, I wish they would have said something to me, but two, uh, you know, when you do a short-term rental, usually at the end of each and every guest stay, you have a cleaning person going in and they're your eyes and ears and they're, they're the boots on the ground. They're the ones checking for those things and will report those back to me. Uh, in a short-term rental, you just typically don't have that risk of damage, uh, prolonged damage like you do in a long-term rental. If you've got a, a lazy tenant who's just paying rents and they're not good at keeping the place or they because it's not theirs, they don't care about trashing it, uh, you can you have a higher risk of damage potentially with long-term rental. Now, again, having said all that, I am in favor of long-term rentals. Love them, love them, love them. I just feel like a lifestyle asset, a short-term rental has a higher ROI and has a lot more pros. And ultimately, the best thing about a, long, the, a lifestyle asset is that you get to use it. You get to take your family, friends, uh, loved ones there. You get to create memories, have experiences, and uh, and you can get, and usually that's paid for. All of that's paid for by your guests uh, the rest of the year when you're not when you're not using it. So I hope you found that helpful, that information helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or need anything from us, uh, I am just, uh, you can go right to our website. Uh, I'm just a, a very quick uh, email or phone call away. Again, my name is Peter Skaggs with Lighthouse. You can, uh, uh, you can find us on imalighthouse.com. Again, that's the letters I, letter M, letter A, lighthouse.com. I'm a lighthouse.com. We'd love to have you join us there uh, and reach out to us, email us, call us. Uh, we'd love to help you as you consider buying a lifestyle asset. Uh, remember, a legacy isn't left. It's lived. Have a blessed day.